Hey guys, you're in a nutshell with me, Ina. Nako, I'm so looking forward to this episode. Matagal na ako naghahanap ng uh, makakakwentuhan na Pilipinong dumating dito in the 70s. Okay, so almost 50 years na po nasa Canada itong ating kakausapin ngayon. Ngayon, I'm so curious about, you know, life specifically for immigrants back then. So anyway, i uh, papasok ko na po sila, dalawa po sila sila pong mag-asawa, Felipe and Lyra Gregorio. Ayan. Thank okay. you so much po for uh, being here. So what what brought you guys to uh Canada? Yeah, that was the Marshall of the 70s. That was Marshall. Marshall. Law. Okay. Like graduate come in 1972. That was when Marshall law was declared, right? The and then I, I worked. Nagtrabaho ako sa Pilipinas sa Elisal de Rolling Mills. Pero nagsara na daw yung planta na yun. And mm -hmm. see, my wife was a public health nurse sa sa Tagig. Tagig was oh. a city then. Public sa sa ang town town and municipal nurse. Oh, so, and my father was an executive at Manila Electric Company. But I I couldn't see me getting to that position like my my father, right? I was working at Elizalde. Alam mo naman sa atin, influence ang, ang ano, nag, nag, ano, I, I've given up, I have to get out. I have to find another place. I was frustrated with my career. I don't think I could support a family as an engineer in the Philippines. Wala pa noon ng mga OFW nung araw na yun. Oh, oh, oh. Kaya nag-apply nag nag ako noon. Nag-apply ako independently sa Australia, sa Uganda. It, 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 never, it didn't work. Anyway, I have uh, an uncle in Montreal teaching. We asked him to sponsor us. Oh, okay. Teka, curious po ako dito sa sinabi ninyo na even at that time, parang uh, malaking bagay sa Pilipinas for you to, you know, rise up the career ladder, yung mga connection, influence, yun po ba yung sinasabi ninyo? Can you share with us ano pong experience yeah. dyan back then? Yeah, that is the, that is the, okay. that, that is the, uh, no, the, what's go observation ko at that time, right? It's like sa, 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 ano namin, sa, sa department namin, sa Elisaldi uh, Iron and Steel. Uh, there's, uh, some people are given the opportunity to, to be trained overseas. If you're not in that, then you can be left behind, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I, I, I felt like I was being left behind and I, I, we all, we all did had a, one child at that time. Mm -hmm. We were still living with my dad, switching from our place to their place. Uh, I think my dad was paying for our babysitter. My dad gave us a, an owner so that we could yeah, commute around. Right. So even though we are both at that time, everybody thought we were making good money as a public health nurse and I was an engineer. engineer, chief supervisor, we still couldn't have a good life. Mm -hmm. You know, without our parents, no, we we won't. We won't. Yeah. We can have a good life. So we have to find a way to get out. And I was my dad encouraged me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yung, fa yung father po ninyo, no, sabi niyo Manila Electric Company, that is otherwise known as Meralco. Para sa mga, yeah, that's right. uh, ano, that's right. sa yeah, he, he was an engineer. He was an engineer. And he, he was also lecturing yes. in, at uh, Mapua. For those uh, curious, no, sa viewers po natin, uh, Felipe is an electrical engineer, right? And he was yeah. able to pursue engineering in Canada. And he retired as director of engineering noong kanyang kumpanya for the whole North America parang, uh, department. Ganun po ba? Can you explain to us how you uh, ended your career here as an engineer? Yeah, that was, at the time, uh, the, the company was split into regions. And its region, uh, there's, uh, there's uh, some uh, director of engineering. Uh, there's mm -hmm. director of engineering, there's director of construction management. Oh. Every a discipline. So I was looking after all the discipline and all everything up, uh, about engineering and design, including the uh, project support, the planners, the schedulers, uh, procurement guys. Right. So, oh. so I was I was looking. There's about there's about a thousand people at, by the time I retired. So oh. that's at the end. I retired ten years ago. 
And for those interested, ano, si Felipe, um, he will come in for a different episode to give advice for aspiring engineers, si mga kababayan natin. Kasi sabi niya, he observed that, you know, watching, I think, social media, napapansin, din po, napapansin daw po ni Felipe that there are Filipino engineers str- struggling talaga to, um, you know, pursue their careers here in Canada. So we'll have a separate episode for that. Diba? Para makapagbigay po kayo ng tips for them. But for now, as I mentioned, I'm so curious about life in Canada for immigrants in the 1970s. Um, they arrived here in 1976, so 48 years na, no? almost five decades. Um, marami na po bang Pilipino nagsisilipata nung, uh, nung panahon na yun? Kasi sa ano kami na, we landed in Montreal. So okay. So that's because that's where my family was. By the time he sponsored us, we already had two kids. Two kids, right? So it was not easy. It was not, it was not easy at the time, right? We came in with a thousand dollars in our pocket, and <laughs> we hmm. actually we borrowed the money for the plane ticket. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> it was it was apply now pay later kind of thing. Oh, right? para ay yeah, fly now pay later. Okay. We couldn't afford. My dad gave me the pocket money at $1,000. That's the help we got from, like from the parents, either. right? Uh, pero in the 1970s, medyo malaki-laki na rin po ba yung $1,000? Oh, yeah. It, it was, Oo it, naman. It, it gave us a little bit of confidence and peace of mind that, you know, even though my uncles were here, or oh, were in Montreal, uh, you know, it, 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 we knew we will not get hungry. And then we, the look, looking for a job at that time, in 76, if you remember, that was the Montreal Olympics. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Uh, there, that was, there was a shortage of accommodation in Montreal because oh. agents were given to people, Tourist. tourists and uh, 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 people connected to the Olympics. So it was difficult. You know, we ended up in a basement apartment. It's a package at that time, this immigrant package. That you're gonna buy <laughs> um, everything there, yeah, the living room set, everything. You know, but it, Bedroom, normally, the normally the apartments have the um, the apartments are equipped with whites, right? We, they used uh, to call it whites. Uh, I know uh, whites. Uh, the fridge, the stove. Uh, oh, no, okay, okay. So oh. those are whites. So, so they have you, you rent an apartment. You already have the fridge and the stove as a minimum, and then your bed and, and living room set. So we, we dining. That, yeah, so we, we bought that and we live in a in a in a in a basement at first. For a, so. for a month. I see. For a month and then but then we move on to a better place after that because uh, it, it was it was bad. So anyway, so Yeah. So how was uh, job hunting naman po at that time? I don't know uh, if this is true. Pero meron po kasi rin kaming uh, ninong uh, medyo matagal na rin po dito sa Canada. He would tell us na in the 70s Yung mga immigrants dumarating, sometimes in the airports pa lang daw po, you will see signs, yung mga placards tinataas daw, sinasabi parang looking for a job, yung mga looking uh, for labor, mga ganun. Totoo po ba yun? Uh, we did not experience that. Okay. Pero, okay, pero ano, uh, at that time, I was counting on my wife to get the job first. A nurse. Right? <laughs> nurse, right? <laughs> but now, ako, nag, ano, I, went to, I went to Canada Human resources, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I actually Canada. went to Immigration Canada and they have a branch of uh, human resources, something like that. They were actually the one who gave me the name of the company to apply to. Apply to. Oh, so did you have a hard time finding uh, your first job? No, no, it wasn't. The Filipinos coming in now, they're different because I'm active with the uh, Mapuans Ontario. I don't know if you heard of Mapu- uh, International Association of Mapuans in Ontario. Now, a lot of Kids mm-hmm. coming from the Philippines who are engineers, they have more confidence, they're more organized, they're yes, more sir. aggressive than we were during my days. And during my days, we still have that colonial mentality. It was looking, comparing me to the new arrivals, it was bad. I was, we were. Yeah. We, Can you ex- share with us, Fano, what do you mean? Ano po yung experience ninyo as applying here as an engineer from the Philippines in the 70s? as a graduate from the Philippines, I didn't even think of applying as an engineer. Oh, parang wala kayong lakas ng loob nung time na yun. I was not good enough to apply as an engineer, right? So I applied for as a draftsman. Okay, so I was able to get a job as a draftsman. 
uh, okay. that was uh, 1976. 76, and the company was U.S. Steel. Okay. That was my job. And I was hired as a junior draftsman. I was already four years experience in the Philippines as, uh, as, uh, as an engineer. As, and as an engineer. Si Lira po, uh, uh, ma'am, how were you able to get a job uh, right away? As a, paano po, from being a nurse? Nagtrabaho ko ng one month sa nursing home, but I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't work there. Then I re, uh, na reapply ako don sa Jewish General as a OR nurse. So Jewish General Hospital is like, they call it Philippine General Hospital, right? Because there's a lot of Filipinos there. <laughs> even back then? Even back then? Even yeah. back then, yeah. A lot oh. of doctors, a lot of nurses, uh, nurses med tech. Yeah. I was given one one year license to work, oh. take the exam to prove that I could continue as a nurse. Uh, did, sorry, ma'am. Did you have to study no more? Na? No. Oh, yeah. oh. Review, just review. For the exam. Oh, just review. Tapos you have one year for you to take an exam, tama po? Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. But you could practice. You could you practiced right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they gave me uh, the position as an OR nurse because then I have experience. They just gave me orientation and then put to work right away. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Ma malayo na po sa situation ng mga <laughs> nurse ngayon. Okay. So I was wondering. Can you can you share with me paano po buhay ng mga immigrants in the 70s? Kasi we hear a lot of comments today no sinasabi nila no nang dali pa ng buhay um, ngayon napakahirap na daw lalo na dahil dumami na lalo yung immigrants hindi na maka-afford ng bahay. How was your experience in the 70s? I guess uh, 80s also. Yeah, it's it's the, I think there's some truth in that, right? To say, mas, mas mura lang ang bahay noon for sure. Pati mm -hmm. yung mga apartment doon, mas mura. But at the same time, mas mababa din ang sweldo ng mga tao, right? At that time, right? Yeah. How so, much was your first ano, wage, your salary? Ang doko na, $5 an hour lang eh. Oh. Ang sweldo ko eh. Kasi, you know, they took a... There's one thing that I hated. I hated that company and I, I, I got even with them. <laughs> Uh, they took advantage of me. Oh, if five dollars an hour, right? So I was working, and then I found out that that Sick. our secretary was making more than me, mm -hmm. right? And I was working as, as a draftsman, and I was actually working as a dis design designer draftsman, right? So because eventually you realize that you could do a lot of the work, you you realize that you know you this this engineers are not smarter than we are they're not better educated than, than we were right so eventually you get to a point when you can discuss serious technical issues with them mm -hmm. so you, you're actually participating in the design right so 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 i the, the, i hated that company so i left them right away right oh, so to find okay. to find to find my level right so uh, the problem with canada i think everywhere else if you start at like five dollars an hour, right? For you, because they're limited on how much they could give you raise every year, mm -hmm. right? Unless you get they give you a promotion, but even that is not they're not gonna give you a big raise, right? The only way you could do it is get out of there and look for another job and get a jump on on your on your on your salary. This this okay. is what So you found uh, another uh, employer and how was that? I was I switched to an agency. I went to an agency, mm. and the the advice of the agency was for me to switch to because I was my my education was in power. I don't in, in electrical engineering okay. is high voltage power, right? Okay. Uh, that's my background, Samapua. The, the agency that uh, the employment, you know what says? There's so many people in power, uh, electric power, right? Why not just switch to instrumentation? Because my experience sa uh, Elizalde was in instrumentation, right? So I said, okay, I'll switch to instrumentation and controls. So that was the best advice I got from the agency. Mm. So I switched to instrumentation. So I went to another job, but another job that switched to twelve dollars an hour. Oh wow, more than double again. More than double because that's where I'm supposed to be. So I started working at. Uh, 
Gulf Petrochemicals. Gulf oh. Petrochemicals in Sarnia. Still in Montreal po ito. So Montreal, in Montreal. Montreal. Montreal in Varennes. Okay. Sir, can you uh, share with us yung uh, cost of living? Kasi sabi nyo, no? There's some truth to uh, those things. Yeah. Mahira pang buhay ngayon. With your salary back then, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the cost of living at that time, what were you able to afford? Mabilis po ba halimbawa makapundar ng bahay because yan ang biggest, you know, goal ng marami po natin mga kababayan. Yeah. Yeah, ano, siyempre mas mura ang bahay noon. At mm -hmm. the same, mas mababa pa rin ang sweldo. Uh, Eh, yung ayong na araw, mamimili kami ng grocery, $25, puno na yung basket, puno na yung cart. One week na yun. One week na yun namin. Okay. Uh, ano, kaya, kaya siyempre, nasweldo namin, kaya nag-ipon kami. Uh, we bought the first house in, in 1980. 1980. After four years. After four years. Before that, we were renting. We lived in Montreal for 12 years. Oh, okay. That's where we established that. Uh, Lira got her license. That's where I took the board exam in Quebec. In 1978, I wrote the board exam in Quebec. So that's the only time that I was reclassified as an engineer in 78. Mm -hmm. That's see. when I, I started working as an engineer after two years. Right? Oh, okay. How, how about how was uh, it raising two children at that time? Ano? Dalawa po anak ninyo when you uh, basically arrived here. Anong schedule routine niyo? Is it the same as uh, with what you know we're seeing today? Na usually na shifting po yung mag-asawa, so you know someone will always be with the children. How was it for you then? Same things. It is nothing strange, right? Because mm -hmm. dito we have we grew up sa Pilipinas. We we were lucky to to, to grow up with with maids and 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 uh, driver at home. But pagdating dito, we have to do everything, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't even know how to cook rice when we got here. So, <laughs> so, so we, uh, but you learn, you learn, you learn, you learn fast, right? Otherwise, you yeah. start, right? So, uh, so yeah, we then adala namin sa to babysit around bata sa maga, and whoever would be able to come home because uh, the, the nurses they will start early, right? You seven start seven o'clock. I start later, so I, I will drive the kids to babysitter. Mm -hmm. it, and then okay. sometimes she will pick them up. She will pick them up before a car, and you have to do it by bus. by bus. Right? It's the same thing. The things that I hear from the newcomers, it's the same thing that we experienced before. We develop friends during those days. Kasi mga puro bagong dating mga Pilipino. Pagdating dito, talagang tulungan. <laughs> yeah. So that how was the Filipino community back then? Chaka ano po usually the mga trabaho mo? Spirit is very strong. It was it was very I don't know now. I, I don't know now. <laughs> then we were close. We were yeah. together every weekend, you know, we yeah, yeah we, we go to the park, we we we, we share our, you know, even though we, we <laughs> one day we went to the park in Montreal that we had to take the metro. And we brought our we brought our grill. pots and cans and <laughs> pots and cans and grill like refugees in the in the, in the subway, right? <laughs> uh, people were staring at us, but it's okay. We had fun, and we 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 traveled that way like uh, it's a group, you know. Uh, you know, we were like my wife's a nurse. The, we have a uh, somebody there, a doctor, uh, an engineer, a mechanical, uh, a med tech. Uh, among our group, right? All of yeah. us, professionals, especially those days, the only people kind of will take our professionals. Oh, nga. I'm actually, I was gonna ask about that. Ano po profile no mga jobs na kinukuha ng mga Pilipino back then? Because, you know, in recent years, we've heard about, you know, caregivers, um, and more recently, yung mga highly skilled na rin, like IT. Yeah. Back then, ano po ang mga trabaho ng mga Pilipino na mad they, pinakamadalas? They uh, professionals so you have to be a college graduate mm, okay unless you got sponsored by and uh, that requirement is uh, it's not there for if you like for instance if i would have sponsored my brother who is a high school graduate then it would be That's okay fine. so how has canada treated you guys how has life been since you moved here um right. yeah but we work hard well, we are, I, I, I keep telling my wife, somebody is looking after us, right? Somebody is really looking after uh, our family. We never, 
never and lost the we never lost a job we never uh, oh, we wow. never experienced being laid off from work yeah uh when when we when we get when i get into some issues at work i always landed on my feet it's amazing how how lucky we are or how blessed we are that we ended up landing our feet even though we we get some 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 setbacks, setbacks right so yeah so that's uh, so it canada has been good for us and <laughs> heard there's a lot of people leaving right kind of oh nga. Mer marami po ngayon mga umaalis both yeah. you know immigrants uh, and canadians mismo daw umaalis ngayon yeah and so, I'm, I'm i'm you know i'm sad about that i i i know why because if you live in toronto so, yeah. and uh, gta to buy a house is it's crazy it's like i give you a, an example right we bought a house in montreal for 40 Five. Forty-five thousand dollars. So we left in eighty-eight, eighty-seven. We sold it for hundred four thousand. Wow! So that house has already paid, right? So we didn't have a mortgage at that time in in eighty-eight, eighty-seven. I was transferred to Toronto, right? So we have to buy a house in Toronto, right? So we we said, okay, we have this about because we sold another property, so we we have thousand dollars in our pocket right we went to toronto <laughs> it's, it's only down payment for two hundred and eighty thousand house Grabe, no? that's not even in toronto in mississauga Sorry. right at so that time mississauga we, mga puro talahib pa po doon at that time oh yeah our neighborhood there's there's farms around our neighborhood <laughs> oh, oh. so we ended up with a mortgage again right but what uh, then uh, almost 100 170,000 150 150,000 mortgage again at that time right that was in 88 mm. so so even that uh, even that you'll think 280,000 or 300 300,000 dollars would be would be cheap right now you cannot buy <laughs> a single bedroom condominium for that money yeah, oh, oh. so even at that time, malaki na yung discrepancy po ng housing cost ng Greater Toronto area to those outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially those days because there was an exodus from from, from Montreal. Montreal because of independent movement, right? Yeah, and oh. French, the French requirement, right? So, so we have to, we, we have to, I'm, you know, I I was transferred because I asked to be transferred to Toronto mm -hmm. because I. I, I reached a point in my career that I, I, I couldn't compete without Blue being man. able to speak in French or, oh, or write it, right? So, so we have to do something, otherwise uh, I will not go any farther in my career. A uh, last but, question na lang po before we end the episode. Uh, earlier you said you left the Philippines because, you know, one of your frustrations were um you felt like mahirapan kayo di ba? without connections or uh, you know mga kakilala did you experience that here in canada or hindi mo ano po ang naging ano nangyari dun sa concern po ninyo na yon when you got here no Just here like, no. here no that's not i don't know in some my experiences no there's nothing like that here right so you have knowledge. to work if you work hard they recognize you and then and 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 they, they, especially with with my last job here i worked with that company i worked a lot i worked there for 30 years, 30 years. that company is uh, i joined him in 1985 because my father my father said uh work hard and your boss will pull you up and in a way that's true because if you work hard somebody will recognize that you work hard that you know what you're doing and they will pull you up but at the same time here uh somebody will if, if nobody pulls you up but then you have to force yourself up right other or find another job find another yeah. if, you, if this company is not recognizing me then i'll go somewhere else right that's that's here and then they and then all of a sudden they realize as a, oh oh this guy is going to leave we better we better okay. do something offer him something else right oh, so po ang naging style in you, you mean uh, yeah working. my uncle uh, my uncle mario she was scared all the time because really? all of a sudden I'm I resigned I'm looking for another day. So what what are you doing you have kids say da, 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 right <laughs> I have to do that otherwise I, I, you know I'm not going to get anywhere. I won't be able to afford my kids to support my kids 
right? If you don't like it, be, uh, be sure you you have <laughs> you have you you have before you let go of this job, you have another job lined up already, right? So yeah, I well. It worked out for you, so uh, yeah, good for you <laughs> yeah. for knowing your value. <laughs> yeah, the other thing is that very important is that if you, if you, th there are two of you, right? You can take chances. I could mm. take chances because if say if I if I fail, my wife is there, right? Mm -hmm. yes, we we still wouldn't get hungry, right? Because she's mm -hmm. working at that time anyway. So you could take chances. Otherwise, if you don't, if you if you will not be able to take those chances, then you will just stay in one place. And I'm sure marami ka pa pong makukwento from your experience uh, ng almost 50 years here in Canada. But again, we will have another episode with uh, Felipe about a uh, four aspiring engineers po na mga kababayan natin. Again, he ended okay. his career as a director of engineering ng kanyang kompanya. So he definitely will have a uh, good uh, insights about that but for now maraming salamat po felipe and lira for sharing your story um yeah so uh you gave me a good glimpse of how life was uh like for immigrants in the 70s mukhang cost of living lang talaga yung yung hindi lang lang but that's the biggest difference ano today cost of living yeah. cost of living is yeah that's that's true Competition at work is probably the same. We had just yeah. said, but, but. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's it for this episode. I will see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye.